surprise <laughs> don't get it twisted i didn't travel outside the country neither am i in dubai this is a boy state welcome to project hour on ebbc soul television abakaliki i am your host evelyn aligwe as you can see behind me the beauty behind me is scattered all over the state let's go see more of it democracy There is no gain saying the fact that people of goodwill will always prefer light to darkness. No wonder the people of Ebony State preferred the person and government of engineer David Mweze Umahi, deeply rooted and founded on divine mandate at this time, for the Almighty God is solely the true light unto the world. On the inception as governor of Ebony State, on May 29, 2015, Ebony State, salt of the nation and environment, ward darkness outlook, including the state capital, Abakaliki. How has government utterly changed what it met? Simply put, Abakaliki, the state capital, was a mere glorified capital city, as little or no functional street light could Lo and behold, came engineer David Mweze Umahi with the torch of light and said, No, my people must be shown the way out of darkness. There must be light. And in the name of God, there came light and there was light. In fact, the onerous tasks of lighting up Ebony State started immediately after the appointment of commissioners and creation of the Ministry of Power and Energy on July 2015 by engineer David Mweze Umahi. An astute, resilient and active man, Chief Emmanuel Uguru, was appointed the commissioner in charge of the ministry and it is a square peg in a square hole. The action to light up Ebony State became unprecedented and superlative. In a very short while, streets like Onwe Road, Udensi Street, Eza Road, Mal 50, Biribiri and almost all the streets of Abakaliki were all lit with functional street lights powered by standby generators for steady light. Udensi roundabout, among other strategic locations in the state, wore magnificent lightning and beautifications. It was an unbelievable beginning. Under three months, remember we came to be in, I said, July 1st, 2015. By August 29th, the whole of um, Rongwafo Forest, that's close to PDP secretariat, up to Anebon, then some everywhere, from uh, uh, 
while it used to be spirit, you know, but by the grace of God, we've started remembering from where we are coming, and Akanadia came to be, and that is the uh, Akanadia flyover junction. From there to Mami Market, that's towards Nkwago. Under one month, August 29th, these places became fully illuminated by street light, and people thought it was a full dream. People could not believe it. So, at last, something good can come out of Nazareth. A boy was already regarded as a dustbin. Where you go to dump, where this and that started happening. And people said, okay, let us watch and see to what extent they will go. Believe you me that under one moon, the whole thing packed up. How did they pack up? Little did anybody knew that it was eight millimeter armored cable that the previous administration used. And we now replaced everything. And that was how stability came to be. So uh, it didn't end there. We went to other streets in the town. Of course, I should be telling you that before we came in, about 103 streets were given out on contract by the previous administration. And this was contract that was supposed to last for two months. Two months, unquote, two months. Later lasted for eight years and never saw the light of the day. But with the help of God and with the man known as Engineer Dave Omai, who came on the platform of Divine Mandate, under two months, we started seeing light. And it came to be proved that he was going to block out darkness in not only in, at the capital city, but in a place called Ebony State. And that was how we started expanding. In fact, this government is such that there is nothing we did or we are doing right now in this ministry. We have the date we did it. We have the cost. If I all, for any reason, the got variation, which was about three or four jobs. Otherwise, His Excellency the Governor do not believe. If we give you a job and we tell you, are you prepared? Don't come back for variation. If you know you are going to come back for variation, you better leave it. Because the money is not there. But he manages the little resources in such a way that people will begin to ask. Of course, you know they are already asking, where is this man coming from? How does he get his own money? Is it true that Ebony is one of the states that get the least allocation in the Federation? People begin to doubt. But when you look at the pages of the dailies, you also got, get much more convinced that actually this man is being led by God. That not even a dime is being added. Rather than being getting uh, additional, it is rather dropping. But Ebony never behaved as if anything is dropping. Today, the once darkest city of the world has become the brightest city of Nigeria. Close to 200 streets and communities across the state today enjoy street light that has enhanced commerce and security. In addition, Ebony State, salt of the nation, has grown past other states of the Federation and currently it's competing favorably internationally as it now has enough street lights, CCTV cameras for security of the capital city, sky beams, among others. In fact, Abakaliki Township Stadium, now Ngeloruta Township Stadium, now has good lights in addition to the reconstruction of the stadium to international standard. The stadium currently is best at night. On lightning and activities including football matches could go on at any time of the night. The new Akanu Ibian Belt flyover Senator Dr. Ofianwali Flyover and many others enjoy steady street lights at night as well as international standard decorative lights. 500 kVA and 300 kVA transformers and generators are at each of the 47 substations that provide steady power to the street lights. 
local government areas in the state are all enjoying full street lights courtesy Ebony State Government under Engineer Nweze Umahi. These substations where we have our generators, on monthly basis, by last month, we paid 30 million. Of course, it was minimal. So many things account for this uh, huge sum of money we spend on gas. The cost of gas, you know it fluctuates. We started by buying gas 140 times, I mean 49. And it rose to 200. Then you, you, are, you are where I am. The same market you buy is where I buy, where governor buys, where everybody do. Now you agree that there was a period it got to 250 in Naira. And we are even lucky it has not gotten to the level of uh, petrol. If it is that way, I don't know what we would have done. But I still believe that no matter where it gets to, the governor will tackle it and keep Ebony people happy because Ebony people have been taught how to remain happy with the electricity. So, we, in order to look out of the box and see a way out so that we don't continue to pay this huge sum that should have also been going here and there, Ebony State now imbibe the spirit of going for renewable energy. And you know when His Excellency the Governor appointed an essay not long ago for renewable energy and EEDC. What are these re renewable energies? Solar. Anything that can give us electricity outside the conventional uh, electricity that is being monopolized by who you know and I do. Otherwise, call them MEPA, call them EDDC, call them public holding. And whatever name they are answered in the park, they are still where they are taking us to. They have not led us to anywhere. These are just the beginning. More are on the way for Ebony people and residents by the state governor, engineer David Mweze Umahi. For Ebony can only get better under his watch, Governor Umahi promises. It must be noted that the essence of the drastic electrification of the state include enhanced socioeconomic status of Ebony people and development, security checks, beautification of the state, and hope for the aggressive industrialization of the state by investors, as investors are welcomed. To ensure steady street lights, the government procured 11 sky lift vehicles. These help in the maintenance of the lights across the state. One can easily see the engineers at work at any point or time of the day and night. This is a sign of a responsive government. If your street light is lighted up and you enjoy the light every day, you have to appreciate the state government that ensured this. The next is on the effort of the government to reduce the cost of running the street lights. The costs of petroleum products and maintenance of generating sets call for an alternative to our present power supply. The need for this also extends to the importance of having an environmental friendly means of power supply. To achieve this, Ebony State Government under engineer David Nweze Umahi has started looking towards the use of renewable energy empowering the street lights. This time around, it is not the use of solar panels that do not serve the needed purpose. One of the efforts of the government in this regard is at the permanent site of Ebony State University at Bakaliki where the solar project there is being used to power lights around the area in a test run of the renewable energy. There is also the hybrid street light for Afibut Town presently going on. When completed, it would light up the city with its attendant advantages. Uh, if you go to Afibut today, we are doing uh, solar hybrid 
uh, street light for 782 million. 782 million. You know, it's close to a billion. Let me also use this to uh, direct us a little bit. One would have been thinking that His Excellency the Governor will start such a thing in his home. He's going gradual. He realizes that Abakaliki is the capital city. He also realizes that he should be going that way. And he also realized that the beautiful ones are not yet gone. He should start somewhere. Maybe by the time the more beautiful ones are done, it will get to everywhere, including Ubu. By this moment, it is already illuminated. We only skipped the area which government is doing road expansion and directed that work should stop there. When you go there now, you discover that 110 poles is already on. What is the difference between that uh, renewable energy called solar hybrid one with the one we are doing or we've done? In that case, it does not require cable. It does not require gas. It does not require anybody to be paid to keep garden. Nobody does. Well, the cost appears too big. But by the time you evaluate and aggregate everything between now and whenever, you know, it, it has cost nothing. It has cost nothing. Check the, what, what amount we are spending on gas on daily basis here. So, we are gradually replacing what appears conventional, what appears orthodox to the new system called renewable energy. If we don't get, go that way, we won't survive in Nigeria, in the country. The government is truly driving a born state towards the contemporary development in line with what is seen in developed cities of the world. Renewable energy saves money and sustains the environment. Let's now have the report on the effort of government in maintaining a viable fire service. Tony Ukume has the report. Whenever we hear fire, 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 we get alarmed and would naturally scamper for safety or move to help save lives and property. The government, on its path, takes proactive steps to avert or stop fire outbreaks. That is another area the present government has done very well in. Ebony State's fire service was established to help checkmate fire disaster in the state. The agency had been moribund for years, hence not being fully equipped for the firemen to deliver on their mandate. Even the office block was in a mess and overgrown with weeds. The present government in Ebony State, under engineer David Mweze Omahi, met the agency in a lamentable state that will be best described by the Commissioner for Power and Energy, Chief Emmanuel Ogro. We met a moribund fire service department. We met a thick bush. In fact, if not that God was on the side of the people called Ebony and Abakaliki in particular, elephant and the other dangerous um, animals fighting and so on and so forth, would have come out from there and begin to chase people away along what I was road or Chris Wanko Road, by the left hand side of the road. You know where it is. And the day I went there, I couldn't believe myself. And I told everybody to pack it. They left. And of course, it was during heavy rainy season. We knew the time we came in. Then uh, what I did was, out of my pocket, we hadn't had anything then, went and bought the uh, Herbicide, the one that killed. We made every effort. After that, we couldn't kill it because it was, and we started going for these um, laborers to excavate and uproot the heavy trees that were already destroying the wall and the fence of the buildings there. And that was how we recovered the place. By the time we recovered the place, and we asked who was there as the chief fire service officer, what do you have here? There are, you, you knew, almost on daily basis, we are having inferno 
and fire outbreak, almost all parts, everywhere, every day, people we are shouting dead, oh, fire, 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 fire. But you agree with me that it is not the things of the past. It's all stories, it's all history, it's all events. But I wouldn't fail to tell you that. The ugly story they told me then was that um, the little equipment they had, that the people came from the town and got them terribly beaten and threw away everything, that they don't want to hear that there is anything called fire service department and remove their inscription, the signpost, threw it away. That they were there doing nothing. Why should you answer fire service where you cannot combat even a little light of fire? Will you say the people were wrong? They were not wrong. You have such a beautiful compound, such a fence with bogus signposts that they answer fire service. But do you also blame the, the, the department? Are there anything? And I asked them, what do you used to do when there is fire? They said all of them were run away. To revive the agency, the government of engineer David Mweze Omahi moved into action, cleared the premises, and improved on the equipment available for the firemen to discharge their responsibilities. The government procured eight new firefighting vehicles and refurbished the two old ones the agency had. With 10 fire engines, the agency decentralized to strategic points across the state to be able to handle incidences of fire outbreak across the state. The state is now better equipped to handle fire outbreaks. No wonder the high rate of fire incidents seen in the state has reduced to the barest minimum. Today, by the special grace of God, using a man that hears the language of God, it, it, nobody hears of fire service again. It is not that they don't, but at the slightest occurrence, we put it off. The equipments are there. Within a year, His Excellency the Governor procured eight heavy firefighting engine. When I mean engine, I mean uh, Mercedes engine, not just engine. But, you know, when we, when we use our term, you talk of engine, you think it is just an engine lying there. But let me uh, <laughs> digest and call it a vehicle, firefighting vehicle. Eight of them. And refurbished the only two that were available. You can now imagine. How could anybody have combated? Would you have used yourself? So that is the stage, and that is the reason for which, no matter any part of the states, there is a fire outbreak. We are already there. You may need to ask, how do we from here, under a second round there? We are not magicians, and of course we are not God, but God uh, imparted the knowledge, and the wisdom, and the inspiration through his inspiration and through the directive of the Excellency, the governor of Ebony State, we decentralize. We have our zonal office at Oneke. We have our zonal office at the local government because it is a suburb, even though you see it's in Ebony North. We have our zonal office in Africa. We have our zonal office at Ubu before you come to the headquarters and go into government house. The, no matter the time of including now, you go there, you see a station there. Despite these efforts of government, all residents of the state have a part to play to consolidate the gains already made in curbing outbreak of fire in the state. The government calls on people to play their part. It is not as if we don't have challenges in that direction, especially in the fire service department. What are those challenges? People still like to use inferior materials to do their wiring. And we are asking and are still asking. We still keep doing the best we can for um, educating the people 
using the radio, using the television, using town criers on the do's and don'ts of the fire service department, which my ministry is supervising, as His Excellency the Governor directed. Um, people also go for cheap ones. There are two things. You know the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. There are people who go for cheap material because they lack the knowledge. They don't know which is which. Now, secondly, people have not been able to imbibe our preaching that they should have a, a, a fire extinguisher. People are, are yet to imbibe the spirit of being precautious, being proactive, so that the evil days will not be shifted. So it doesn't cost much to get this. Even if you can't afford this, is 9 kg. Even if you can't afford this, there are smaller, smaller ones. This will not cost more than 15, 10, 15, 20,000. And you have mansions and you can't afford it. Yet you build mansions. Just a little thing, then it will ignite and set the whole place ablaze. Not only the house will be set ablaze, all the property and sometimes life may be involved, God forbid. Is it why somebody cannot afford this? Are you ready to go in line with these recommendations? Well, a stitch in time, they say, saves nine. I am Tony Ukuome. Let's now join Bene Edwin Onwe for more reports in the power and energy sector. Light is of God, darkness is of the devil, and nothing good is associated with darkness. If you love the good things of life, you will appreciate light. How has the government of engineer David Mwezomahi ensured light in the state? Well, let's look at how far the government has gone in this regard. Like in the Holy Bible, when engineer David Wenzomahi came on board as governor, he saw the whole area of Ebony State in nearly total darkness. And because he came under a divine mandate, he is totally against darkness. He prayed to God and walked out tirelessly to get rid of ugly darkness. He is succeeding, and darkness is being chased out in a born state. To this end, therefore, our rural communities are not left out. The electrification of a born state, which is aggressively being pursued by the present government of uh, engineer David Wezomahi, is for every community in a born state to benefit and enjoy. According to the Honorable Commissioner, 
for power and energy. Born State, Chief Emmanuel Oguru. The clear mission and vision of Governor David Mwezomahi is that before he concludes his two term in office, all communities and the state must be electrified. The vision was to electrify virtually all communities in a bunch states before he leaves office. And also to ensure that we use the illumination of light or electricity to achieve as many other vision or projects as was possible. What are those things? Security will be enhanced, like we would have seen. By the time I give you more details, you will know how security has been enhanced. And those were what mission and vision His Excellency had in mind by the time this uh, uh, ministry came to bed. And the socialization of the capital city and by extension the entire police states. Before uh, the advent of this ministry, you will agree with me that everywhere was dull, dull here and there. Of course, when you don't see, you don't know whether you are going left, you don't know whether you are going right, you don't even know whether you are going to get stumbled and fall because everywhere appeared dark. Your community may be the next. For more are underway in the area of urban and rural electrification. Courtesy of engineer David Mweze Omahe. The new projects 